So the next two examples of equations that we're asked to solve for have fractions and decimals. I don't particularly want to deal with those if I can help it. And like we learned in the last few sections, whenever I have an equation, I can multiply the same thing to the left and the same thing to the right, and I'm still going to have an equivalent equation. So we're going to use that to our advantage. So the first example, if I multiply both sides by my LCD of the denominator, I am going to clear out all of those fractions. So least common denominator between 2 and 4 is 4. So if I multiply this side by 4, I have to do the same over here. And what's going to result? So we have to distribute. 4 divided by 2 will give me 2x. 4 times 5 will give me plus 20. And 4 divided by 4, these are going to cancel and we'll just be left with 3 over here. So in that case, we cleared out all of those fractions. We can do a similar story for this one. What can I multiply a decimal by to move that point? So to get whole numbers, I have to move that decimal point once over here and once over there. So I can multiply both sides by a factor of what? 10. If I multiply by 10, I'll move both of them and deal with whole numbers. So again, we have to distribute. 10 times 2.3 will move the decimal place. We'll be looking at 23x. We can't forget to distribute to the other terms that are involved. So 10 times 7 will give me 70. And on the right, again, multiplying by a factor of 10 moves the decimal point 1 to the right. So now, again, we're dealing with whole numbers, which generally we're more comfortable with, less likely to make mistakes with. So the first equation was cleared of fractions. Hello. And the second cleared of decimals. All right. So both resulting equations are equivalent to what we started with since our algebraic work was sound. Whatever we did to one side, we did to the other. So those are equivalent. And you will hear that term very often in math. So the easiest way to clear an equation of fractions is to multiply every single term on both sides. Like we've done by the least common multiple of all of the denominators, or the LCD. So I want to choose some number that's divisible by both 2 and 4, so that when I multiply, I get a whole number out. So we'll do a few examples of these. Hopefully, hone in on your skills. First one that we're looking at, we have a whole lot of fractions. We want to find the LCD between all of these on both sides. So what are we looking at? I have 3, 6, 2, 6, and 1 is that denominator. We don't need to worry about it. So if I just start building my LCD, I'm not going to break it down, but I'm going to start with 3. What is my LCD missing now that this factor is going to have? It already has a 3 in it, but I'm missing a 2. And we can ask again, what is my LCD missing that that one has? Nothing. What is my LCD missing that this one has? Nothing. Nothing. So our LCD in this case is 6. And hopefully you can see that right off the bat. So again, if I multiply every single term, everything on the left by 6, everything on the right by 6, I'm going to clear out all of those fractions. So we need to distribute to each. So I have 6 times 2 thirds x minus 6 times 1 sixth plus 6 times 1 half x equals, if I distribute over here, 6 times 7 six, 6 times 2 x. Excuse me. So we want to simplify. Make this look nicer. So what are we going to get out of here? I like to look at the division first when we're trying to simplify fractions. Since I designed these, designed this LCD, to be divisible by every single denominator, 
I know I'm going to get a whole number out of there. So we'll do that first. So 6 divided by 3 gives me 2. 2 times 2 gives me 4. It's that simple. Do the division first. So again, 6 divided by 6 gives me 1. 1 times negative 1 gives me negative 1. Boring case. What am I going to have over here? 3x. And on the right-hand side, 6 divided by 6 is 1. I'm left with 7 and 12x. Look how much nicer that is than what we started with. Whole numbers are wonderful. So we've seen that before. Those kinds of examples, we can run with them. We'll combine everything on the left. We've got seven factors of x. And everything else is simplified on the right. Now we need to get our x terms together and our constant terms together. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract 7x from both sides. And what will we have? Altogether, 12 minus 7 will give me 5x. And I want that term on its own, so I need to move 7. So if I subtract 7 from both sides, I've got minus 8. Now that that x term is isolated, we need to divide both sides by 5. So in the end, x is equal to minus 8 fifths. Yay! And again, we can plug it back in and check into the original. If you leave it in the fraction form, generally things will cancel nice. In some examples, so if I plug it in in this term, for example, 8 divided by 2 gives me a whole number. So that's nice. But plug it back in and check. I'll just tell you it does work. So my solution set contains minus 8 fifths. All right. So looking at that next example, take it, multiply every single term by the LCD, clear out the denominators, and solve. So as you were looking at that problem, what was your LCD? What is the least common denominator between all of these? Factor of... 8, hopefully. So again, we multiply everything on the left by 8, everything on the right by 8. See what comes out. So as we distribute, 8 divided by 8 is going to cancel and give me 1, so I'm left with 7x. 8 times minus 1 fourth. So 8 divided by 4 gives me 2. And 8 divided by 2 gives me 4x. We have to distribute on the right as well, so 8 times 3 fourths. 8 divided by 4 gives me 2. 2 times 3 gives me 6. And I have 8x left over there. Cleared out all of those fractions. If your LCD is wrong, you'll still have fractions left over. So that's a good tell for how you're doing. So again, combining like terms, I have 11x minus 2 on the left to combine. And we need to get our x's together and the constants together. So I'm going to subtract 8x from both sides. So 8, 9, 10, 11, I'll have 3 left over here. Add 2 to both sides to move it over. Divide by 3. x is equal to 8 thirds. And again, we can always plug it back in and check in the original. Make sure that it works if you're not so confident about it. But it does work, so I'll just tell you our solution set contains 8 thirds. So always multiply any fractions in an equation only. Can't do this with expressions because we're changing it. Only when we have an equal sign can we do this. Okay, so next page. What do you notice about that guy? 9.51 minus 9.21. We have decimals again. So to clear an equation of decimals, we count the greatest number of decimal places we need it to move. Greatest number of decimal places is in any one number. Then multiply every term by some factor of 10. So in this case, the greatest number of decimal places that I have are 2. So I'm going to have to multiply this entire equation by a factor of... 100, so I can move that decimal point two places. If I only need to move it one, I multiply by 10. 
If I need to move it to, like we saw up here, we multiply by 100. Okay, 1,000 if we need to move it three decimal places. 10,000 if we need to move it by four. You get the idea. But at that point, we're dealing with some um, pretty large numbers. So let's look at that next example. It's for you to try. With this equation, how many decimal places do we need to move? What's the greatest number of decimal places that we have? Two in both cases. So we need to multiply by what? Two factors of 10, 100. So we can move and get whole numbers. So take that guy, solve, see what you get. And what do you get when you multiply by 100 on both sides? So I move my decimal point two places. I'm going to have to have a placeholder over here, minus 950y, minus 625. So we need to get the y's on their own and the constants on their own. So I'm going to go ahead and um, subtract 1275 from both sides. So minus 950y is equal to minus... 1900 dividing both sides by minus 950 because I want y on its own. Negative divided by negative gives you a positive, in this case, 2. And again, we can always plug it back in and check, make sure that it works in the original equation. And I'm just going to tell you that it does.